All right, what's up, guys? Sorry about that. I was just filming a Patreon video update, and I was like, oh, God, I have to go live right now. <laughs> so here we are. Good to see everybody on uh, another Thursday night live stream here on the channel. Make sure I'm not echoing. And we're good. All right, cool. We have some great whiskey to taste tonight, and we have a lot of just catching up to do, you know? I mean, the weekly dram came out this week, and that's great. And, uh, you know, you heard about a little bit about the pick, but I can talk more specifically about the barrel pick now. We've gotten a lot of stuff figured out behind the scenes as a Patreon community. And, um, and you know, I think we have a, a system that's that's getting figured out. And I'm just I'm just really excited about how everything's going. So I hope you're all doing well. As you come in tonight, please hit that like button. Let's get some more folks hanging out. And by the way, if you're watching this on the replay or you're watching this live and you're not subscribed to the channel, it, it would be awesome if you considered subscribing. Uh, things have been, you know, a little slower recently, but that's okay uh, on the channel. But, you know, give us a give us a subscribe and come, come back and hang out with Drums and Drams. Okay, uh, I'm going to say hello to some people in the chat. On today's live stream, number one, we do have a giveaway. We have a pretty epic giveaway, actually get one of these up here ready to display a, a sealed one pretty great giveaway today we have uh some bookers to taste interestingly i completely avoided bookers in 2023 so i think i remember that ch people liked charlie's batch if i'm not mistaken let me know what if i'm if i'm way off on that but I did not purchase any 2023 bookers and Joe Dickinson, who was at the at the River Roots barrel pick that we did last weekend, uh, gave me an awesome sample pack. Thanks, Joe. And all four of the bookers from 2023 were in it. So we're going to blind them today. And I have zero impressions, you know, bias, whatever. So this is going to be a fun blind to do. It's kind of tough usually when you have things all from the same line like this. Uh, but maybe the differences will make themselves more obvious than I'm than I'm thinking. You, you just really never know with bookers. It might all just taste like peanut shells. So we've got that. We are going to taste this this bottle, which is the giveaway bottle today. A two hundred and fifty dollar uh, massive proof, one hundred and thirty eight. This is another one of those River Roots port finishes, seven year bourbon plus seven years in a port cask. This is this is uh, some crazy stuff, and this is a different one. Uh, this is getting released. It hasn't been released yet. But when we were up there, they were nice enough to offer us some bottles for the group. And I said I'd like to give one away, and they were totally down for it. So we should, uh, you know, you guys should check out River Roots. They're doing great stuff. Nice guys. Great barrels in there. And we'll talk about it more as we go along tonight. But um, this is releasing this Saturday. You can check out their Instagram page for the details. Uh, I've got them somewhere. I want to say it is between... I mean, let me not misspeak, but I want to say it's like 1 to 3 p.m. Um, or so. Maybe someone else in the chat can drop it. I, I took a screenshot, but I've taken a lot of pictures over the last couple of days because of all this. So if anybody knows, I want to say it's like 1 to 3 p.m. this Saturday at the distillery in Cleveland. And uh, I don't I don't know what the demand is going to be on something like this, but this is pretty much your last chance to get any of these port bottles. Here it is. Yep, 1 to 3 p.m., distillery-only release. It's your last chance to get one of these port finishes. It's their third out of four barrels, and the other one has been spoken for now. I think it's going to go to some some club somewhere, uh, so it's not going to be publicly available from what it sounds like. Uh, and we'll taste it tonight. I'll give you some tasting notes on it. It's definitely a different one than the seal box that a lot of people have uh, have had the chance to try. But I think it's different in a really cool way. Okay. Uh, I need some, yeah, here we go. I need some water. And uh, what else? Oh, I have a couple of new riff samples to taste. I, I said old new riff because I want to, I want to say that Leo hooked me up with these samples. Um, hope I got that right. I, sometimes I label the samples with who dropped them off and sometimes I don't, but I think Leo, um, hooked me up with these, who is a, a patron and, and local, actually. Eight-year weeded and eight-year malted rye from New Riff. Um, so we're going to taste those as well. So we might we might actually start with that. Uh, I will taste the barrel pick that we did. I have a little bit of it left. I'll tell you more about the giveaway in just a second. There's just so much to get to. We're going to have a great night. But I, I want to get started. Let's go, let's go with the tried and true Eagle Rare. Let's get into a little bit of this. 
All right. Let me know what you're sipping on this evening. Hope you're doing well. We've got another barrel pick lined up, guys. Things are off to the races, and I'm so excited. The channel is like things that I've always dreamt of, you know, with the channel are finally happening, and it's just, it's just exciting. It's just exciting. Uh, as usual, if you want to super chat directly and avoid that YouTube 30% cut, uh, that makes me very happy. But I also understand if you want to, uh, you know, throw the super chats up on the screen. Totally, totally get it. I'll keep my phone up here so I can see things coming in. All right. So let me just say cheers, little Eagle Rare. And let's have a good night. Ah, that's my first sip, so... Got to get, got to get my palate acclimated. So it's good to see everybody. Marty, Travis, Sugar Kitty, Joe, Booker's Blind. Yeah, man, this is you're the star of the show. And Joe, you also gave me a sample of one of these eight year uh, new riffs. So I've got a lot to go around of of one of them. I think it's the the malted rye eight year. Yeah. So you and Leo both. Thank you. Oh, Travis with the laser code. Someone dropped a stag laser code on a video today. By the way, I thought I loved it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to keep scrolling. I mean, I, I see all you guys, and I appreciate you being here. Dan, I, I might pull out one of your samples, a little mystery sample from Pink Dan. And I got to go in the order that you specified. So we might do that. I see Clay. I see Javier. I think I may have seen uh, Sandeep. Roy. Hello, 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 everybody. Christine Vasco, I think, is in the house. Paul P. and Walker, Tater Dom, uh, JG. So it sounds like Bill Scott likes the Storyteller Batch. All right, so we'll see. That was the uh, the last one of 2023, it looks like. <laughs> oh, what's up, Mark Vasco? Good to see you, and can't wait for you guys to come down and do that barrel pick with, uh, with us at Middle West. That's going to be so fun. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Storytellers is a good batch, so we got another one of those. Josh, why did you avoid Booker's 2023? Because I think Booker's is overpriced. I don't know if it's even overhyped anymore because I don't think it's very good. I mean, maybe I just have a bad taste in my mouth from it, but I, I just feel like Booker's is not not that great. I don't know. I Now, I like the Bardstown batch from 2021, the red label. I really like that batch for, for a Booker's. So it sounds like Charlie's Batch and Storytellers maybe have some additional layers. Uh, okay. All right. So I think we're we're getting here. Oh, there's Leo. Yeah, they're from... Yeah. Yeah, Leo, I didn't write your name on them. I, I think I started writing names on samples just after you uh, dropped those off because I started getting so much in the mail that I was like, oh my God, I have to keep track of who sent these. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Javier, I've been really curious, man. And Javier, I have so many samples to get to from you. I actually pulled the Craig Gellicky Boss Armagnac, which, you know, I might be able to taste uh, this evening as well, just kind of as we go through this stream. Um, I was just trying to find one that you sent me that maybe more people would have, you know, because you've sent me some amazing, like, older releases and one-offs that I need to spend some time with. But this is one that maybe people, uh, it could convince them to either pick it up or not pick it up. Uh, at the store. All right. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Bad taste literally, says Jeff. Yeah, I, I realized when I said that. Uh, Joe, I did see this. So this is kind of perfect timing. New Riff is dropping an eight-year bourbon this week. They've got this malted rye we're going to taste. They've got a weeded. I, I imagine that means weeded bourbon, not a wheat whiskey. And uh, yeah, so now an eight-year bourbon. I, this is what I've been begging for from new riff. I, I actually, I don't want to say that it's what I always beg for with like newer distilleries. And a lot of them just don't do it. New riff has very consistently just been upping the age and you can, and we can, you can watch it like over the years, you watch the age go up. I think the same thing right now from Sagamore with their, with their own rye, you're just watching the age go up and the product get better and better. And you're like, yes, <laughs> get to 10, get to 12. Okay. So we got a lot of uh, super chats coming in. Thank you, guys. 
I'll get I'll get all of you in a second. I'm going to be tracking tonight um, over here, and you know how that goes. That can be a little challenging with all the Venmos, but I can't complain because I appreciate it so much. Okie dokie. So uh, let's do this now. Let's move on to let's do some of these new riffs up front. I think that's going to be the best use of our time. Okay. So we're going to go new riffs first because the proofs on these... Well, actually, I don't have the proofs on these. What are they? What's the new riff weeded? Uh, Leo, I wonder if you if you know. New riff, eight-year weeded. Bohemian wheat bourbon. Bohemian floor-malted wheat. Huh. Let's see. The proof should be here on um, breaking bourbon. Oh, wow. A 117.9. So these are not low proof, actually. Huh. We're just going to get right into it then. <laughs> I was going to warm my palate up with, uh, you know, let's go, let's go to 100 proof after the Eagle Rare. Not today. So we'll taste these. I am going to taste the pick. Talk about it to all of you. Talk about the experience of going up there to, to River Roots. Which you're going to hear me say a lot of of good things about River Roots because it was awesome. It was just a great experience. And the pricing is amazing. The hospitality, everything was perfect. So you're not going to hear me say a bad thing about them ever. Um, and, you know, everything we tasted was really, really good. So we'll we'll talk about that more. All right. So it looks like about 118 proof for both of these. Let's just, you know, kind of roll with that. Color looks great, by the way. Eight-year new riff. Color looks really good. <clears throat> Wonder if it will... <laughs> Paul P., thank you. Before you get going too far, everyone raise a glass of something for birthday boy today. Look at that, Travis. It's Travis's birthday. Hang on, Paul. Let me write. Let me get you down in here. I got you in for one. And I'll raise a glass of that with my little last sip of Eagle Rare. Cheers, Travis. Joe says, actually, I have a Baker's that I pulled out. I have a 2013 that I was drinking last night. Okay. Birthday boy, Travis. We're going to start with the weeded. Maybe a little less intense than the rye. We'll see. Ooh. This smells like um, New Riff has done a blue corn bourbon and Still Austin did their bottled and bond blue corn. I don't know what other grains are in this, but it has that blue corn smell to it. Let's see. 65% non-GMO corn, 18% uh, wheat, 10 unmalted wheat, and 7 dark wheat. So there's a lot of wheat in here. Um, but it says non-GMO corn. It, I think it would specify if it was blue corn. But it has that kind of like dark, syrupy richness to it that their blue corn had. And maybe that's just the age on here, you know? Wow. It's very, very spicy. I mean, for a weeder, eight years, 117.9. This thing really crawls up your nose. And you can smell the wheat, um, you can smell the wheat bread kind of note, but it's not as pungent, I guess maybe is the word. Yeah, let's go with pungent as as like a Heaven Hill weeder. When you when you drink like I don't know, let's let's say Bernheim barrel proof, you know, which was a similar proof to this. You can it it's just so much wheat. And this you can smell it, but it's not at that level where all you're getting out of the glass is wheat, at least for me. Yeah, I'm in I'm in like cinnamon wheat bread blueberry territory here for some reason. So uh it's a little again a little hot, a little closed off, but let's get it on the palate now. Cheers. Very good. It's weird. Um the way that this drinks this misses part of the tongue. And I talked about this. <laughs> Dan's going to kill me for bringing this up again. 
uh, I talked about this on the Junkies Dark Arts. Like, it missed the whole middle of my tongue when I drank it. This one kind of does the same thing. It really is, like, all around the sides and the front of my tongue. And I've never talked about whiskeys with what areas of the tongue it hits. I've always thought that that was, like, a little overdone. But this one is doing the same thing the Dark Arts did, where it has this, this like, missing part where it just doesn't feel like there's anything on the middle of my tongue. Yeah, it's very soft in the middle of the tongue, and it all kind of hangs out on the uh, on the outside. So, anyways, it's very good stuff, flavor-wise, you know? It's not quite what I thought. Well, I don't know if that's true. I mean, New Riff, Young Stuff, Bright Honey kind of notes. Sometimes you get, like, tea notes in it. And the way that it aged, it didn't really get dark and funky at all. Like, it's, it's not like we have a lot of chocolate notes or a lot of, like, leather and, and funky oak. It's basically like you took all of those brighter notes from the younger versions of New Riff. And you just made them, like, like if, if you're talking about fruit notes, let's say. Let's say you go, like, green apple pear in some of those younger New Riffs. You just made them, like, overripe, over, you know, stewed fruits. But it never gets into, like crazy dark territory now it's only it's only eight years old so maybe at 12 it would get down in those like really dark kind of notes but it is interesting for me that like the way this is coming off i like it i i, I really like it I, st I don't know if i like it as much as the whatever that barrel proof was that william molnar sent i don't know if i even have a sample of that left can't remember the name of it I never remember the name of this one. It had like a silver label on it, maybe. Yeah, Zachary Campbell says, Bardstown wheat skips over my tongue like that. Yeah, it's a weird sensation where you're, it lights you up everywhere else, and then it's just like, whoa, it's so glaringly obvious that it just missed part of my tongue. It's strange how that works. <clears throat> uh, Joe says, Blue Claridge was one of the best special releases. It was That was a very good one. Man, I think, yeah, Will sent all of those samples up here. We'll come back to that. I want to taste the uh, the eight-year malted rye. And uh, on that note of, of the malted rye, I have, I have my six-year. I want to do that comparison. So we're going to do the eight-year malted rye compared to the six-year, except for the eight-year is actually at cast strength, which is cool. But uh, that might make the comparison a little bit more challenging. You cannot go wrong with this six-year malted rye from, from New Rift, though. And I'll never stop loving the bottle. When they put the red text on this, game over i think it looks so good <laughs> josh fritz hey cam how's the foot uh the foot's a lot better i can i i still wear the boot out in public i don't wear it at home and yeah i mean i haven't tried to put on a shoe and like walk around normally because i can still feel when i roll to the outside on that bone it it's still wonky and i do get these crazy shooting pains up my legs sometimes but otherwise it's great <laughs> It's doing all it's doing good. Yeah, please hit that like button. Thank you, Marty. Thanks for hanging out, man. Okay, so now we're gonna go to this six year malted rye. Oh, it's so good. So this has a little bit of a uh it's got a perfumed note to it, like a grapey perfuminess. And I always say that this six-year malted rye reminds me of a Buffalo Trace product in a lot of ways. Tinge of soap, though, and that's a malted rye thing for me. I think on a lot of malted ryes, there's this teeny bit of a soap note. On this one, it it bounces between uh, kind of like orange candies and soap. It, it's this play back and forth between those two. But then underneath it, you get honey. And then you get these kind of dark, uh, perfumed kind of grape notes. 
So a lot of those things are similar to Buffalo Trace products. It's so good. It enters the palate like light, sweet, and then it ramps up steadily. Still with that tinge of that bitter soapiness, but all in all, I think it's really nice. Ah, Javier says strawberries and cream. I could see that. Yeah, it's yes. That's a great call, man. Um, it's like, yeah. And I think I, I think I was, I'm in that same realm. It's I just interpreted that differently. But now you put that in my head, and I can't not smell it. Yeah, jeez. All right, we'll do this comparison, and then I'm getting some questions here. Jason Harris, we'll talk about the the barrel pick and and everything like that uh, right after this um, this malted dry comparison. Uh, Joel, my uh, Venmo is in the description of the video. All right, now let's go to the barrel proof version with another two years on it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. This is the wheat. Now this rye again. Oh my God, this smells crazy. Wow. How many of you in the chat have tried this? New Riff High Note Collection, eight year malted rye at 118.2. How many of you have tried this? That is... That is probably the best new riff I've ever had. Wow. Wayne says, I have. Wayne, what do you think about it? Oh, Javier, did you try the did you try the new riff single malt? What did you think about it? Or did you already tell me? Yeah, urinal cake on that. I am not a fan of that whiskey. Joe got two bottles. Good, man. This stuff is phenomenal. I got to figure out what it is. I have this issue with a lot of these new riffs that it they're the types of whiskeys for me where the notes really blend together pretty well. Um, I guess particularly when they're at cask strength, I find, and maybe that's a polite way of saying they're a little tight, a little closed off. It could be because like the six-year malted rye down at 100 proof, very, uh, very readable when you're nosing it. Like you can kind of figure it out. <clears throat> But whenever I have these at cast strength, they're really challenging for me to pick apart notes wise. This has, um, gosh, what kind of uh, dessert is this? Like this, we're talking about a malted rye whiskey at cask strength. And it smells, it's got like chocolate chip cookie notes to it. But there's something brighter too. Um, some kind of icing, some kind of heavy icing. Kind of burnt cherry notes almost. <laughs> this is good whiskey. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Do I I don't know if I've ever said that. Man. Pillsbury buttercream icing. Clay, maybe. Yeah, maybe that. I am so shocked at how good that is. And I don't think I would relate what I'm tasting right now. Maybe I can see the connection to the six year, but it feels like a completely different thing. Um, It feels like... I mean, the six year again is watered down, but this feels like high floors of a Rick house with that really kind of intensity of the, of the oak. Yeah. Mm. 
It's very good. Jason said, only had the standard rye and the Balboa rye, but I enjoy those too. Man. Devin, what's up, man? Only had the six year. Really like that one. It's good. These these serve two completely different purposes for me. You know, like the, the six year is if, if I'm in the mood for something a la Buffalo Trace, I'd probably just rather drink the malted rye six year because a little more proof than most Buffalo Trace products with a little more interest. Again, the only thing I'd dock it on is that little soapy, you know, perfume bitterness. But whatever. This is if I want like a ballsy pour and something to, something to hold my attention. So if you guys ever have the chance to buy this new Riff 8-year malted rye, gotta check the price point though. What's the price point on this? should say in this little article right 70 bucks oh my god i mean come on you gotta buy two it's that good all right that's a winner that's a that's a value whiskey with an h statement at cask strength with a semi non-traditional grain right malted rye i mean come on from a from a small-ish, you know, smaller, newer, whatever you want to call new riff, producer. Um, small is maybe not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, what's not to love about that? Wow. All right, so we're going to get to some Super Chats here in a second uh, as we as we move along here uh, tonight. And I don't want to wait forever for the Booker's Flight because, you know, I, I want my pal to be somewhat fresh for that. But let's talk quickly about um, the barrel pick, and let's talk more e e expansively about the uh, giveaway tonight. <clears throat> so let me be, let me clarify the giveaway this evening. Uh, there are going to be two winners. The first winner is going to not only get this bottle of the River Roots Port, okay, 138 proof, 14 year, dark as night. We will taste this, and remember, like if you're let me tell you this. This is off profile. This is not like the seal box bottle exactly. So if you want to hold your super chats until I taste it, if you're if you're thinking about getting in on the giveaway or whatever, hold them. You know, if if you're on the fence once you hear me talk about it, because it's a little bit different. It's not like the seal box. I just want I want to say that. Um, but the first place winner is also going to win a one ounce sample of the pick. So you'll be the only person other than the pick team to try it. And I don't have very much left. So whatever I sip tonight uh, out of this bottle, you're getting the, the last ounce of our barrel pick until it comes out in bottle form, which is not going to be for another three to four weeks. I am also going to send the first place winner tonight this. And this just says rye three. This is barrel three of the rye that we tasted there. That means nothing to you. But let me tell you what's in this bottle. Besides a lot of barrel char, which is cool because this was straight out of the barrel. I put it in here. The pick that we have is about 118 proof. And we had to turn down this barrel, which is 130 proof, 11 year MGP rye. We had to turn this down because while it is a very fun whiskey at 130, our pick is better flavor wise, development wise, palate wise, especially nose wise. The nose is crazy. We had to pick it over this 130 proofer. So uh, whoever wins the giveaway tonight gets the River Roots bottle and a one-ounce sample of our pick and the thing that almost was our pick. And so I want to thank Ryan from River Roots for letting me, for letting me take this sample of this barrel that we did not pick. Um, so I appreciate that, Ryan. Second place winner, going to get a two-ounce sample of the River Roots that we're giving away tonight. And then I'll throw, um, I'll throw some great samples in that box as well. Remus Volstead, um, the seal box pick for comparison a lot of really cool stuff but second place winner at least is going to get to try this bottle so there you go that's the giveaway tonight and uh why not you know what why not taste the barrel pick next let's get into it i can't take too much of this because that looks like uh yeah we'll do a little bit more okay so whoever wins, this is yours. I'll put it maybe in a smaller sample bottle. 
uh, when I ship it out. So we'll taste the barrel pick. And I'll put it next to the uh, 130 proofer. And again, these are both 11-year MGP rise. <laughs> All right, we got we got super chats coming in, and some of them are very funny, <laughs> from what I can tell, uh, upon first glance. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, man! So I'm gonna talk as as we go through these two picks i'm going to talk about the uh like the process that we went through at, at river roots uh, to get to this how much time we've been 30 minutes all right we're good so we went to river roots thinking that we were going to pick a uh 10 year mgp bourbon 36 percent rye they had some barrels come in and we went through all four of them and we had a winner after a after a some dispute, and then we did a blind. We had a winner. Um, and then I was like, you know, could we just taste like an 11-year rye? Or I said, maybe we should taste an 11-year rye. And Ryan was like, did I hear somebody say we should taste an 11-year rye? I was like, yeah. And he's like, I thought you'd never ask. And so they had one of these open. And the one that they had open of the four barrels, the other ones had not been popped. The one that they had open, we just sampled out of the barrel and that's the one we picked we when we tried the other four or the other three so we tried four bourbons four ryes and including this 130 proof which when we pulled that one out and we saw the color of this thing um we were like holy crap what is going on here but when we all knows the very first rye that we pulled it was like a it was a look around the room of oh my god <laughs> this is crazy Yeah, Marshall, don't compare them again and have buyer's remorse. I think I'm going to be good. I've done this comparison a few times already. <laughs> so uh, this is our 11-year MGP rye pick at 118. And the first thing I get here is root beer brown butter. So again, I've talked about the Junkies Rye 1 as having all these root beer notes. That one is crazy. That one is way short barrel, dark as night, weird root beer. This is like balanced root beer, balanced brown butter but a nice bit of spice too. It's a mix between cinnamon and herbal, but it has this funk on it. It has a, an old cheese funk, a, a little antique note as well. I wouldn't quite say that it smells like a dusty, but there's an antique note on the whiskey. So old cheese, antique, root beer, brown butter, really dark, but lively, still lively. Let's you know it's a rye. And the way it drinks is so, so full for 118 proof. And that's why this whiskey is the easy first choice out of, out of that bunch that we tasted. Crazy, 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 crazy. I think bourbon drinkers, drinkers will like it. You, you can tell it's a rye, but it's not dill. It's not MGP dill kind of rye. It just has a little herbal. But it's those funky notes, those funky root beers and and brown butters and again I say I say like cheddar cheese. It's got a little bit of that on it. I kind of like that. So now here's 130 proof. Now I let me ask you in the chat. When is when is the last time you ever tasted 130 proof 11 year MGP rye? Because when we pulled this and we checked the proof on it. We double checked the proof on it because we couldn't believe that it was actually 130. The color says it is. Kind of hard to tell here. But I mean, you know, everything was 118 and then we get this 130 barrel. This smells like cinnamon fireball and vanilla. Vanilla bean and fireball. 
It is so intense on the nose. I've never tasted an MGP rye at this age in this proof, though. But it's just kind of, it's a lot of heat. And it actually doesn't develop on the palate as much as the first glass. And I, I was really torn about not picking this barrel just because of the stats, but everyone in the room was like, no, we come on, we have to pick this barrel. And, and they were totally right. And I got a little starry eyed on this one, man, it's amazing. I'll be curious to see, you know, whoever gets these samples. I hope they let me know when they do this side by side. Okay, I have a lot of Super Chats to get to, so let me grab a few of these. Starting with Travis. Okay, starting off with Travis, Mr. Birthday Boy. In for two. He says, uh, it's time to roll the dice. Hopefully I come up. Sixes, but more than likely snake eyes. Either way, more floor whiskey for you. <laughs> uh, floor whiskey is a problem. Jeb, in for 50, dude. Thank you. And he just sent me a drum emoji. Thanks, Jeb. You're making, you're making my life easy. Uh, Paul P. In for 10, says uh, River Roots. Cheers, buddy. Thank you, Paul. If you're just now jumping in here, guys, we're talking about the River Roots barrel pick. It's I'm telling you, this old cheese, old antique note on this rye. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get this thing freaking bottled. Gosh, come on. Uh, I did miss a super chat earlier, didn't I? Tim, let me get you in, Tim. He says, can't wait for the barrel pick. Likewise, man. I'm I'm an impatient person. I, I, I want to just drive up there and say, can I just hand bottle one? You know? Um. All right, James, I got you, man. Uh, in for two says cheers to a great stream. Let's hope so, James. Let's hope nothing uh, nothing goes wrong. Uh, Marty, thank you, man. I got you in for four entries, five, uh, twenty dollars super chat. Appreciate you. And uh, Planet Whiskey, let me get Planet Whiskey in here. Planet Whiskey, any mint in that River Roots pick? I get mint, and I'm not a fan of that in a lot of rise. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know what? There's a little bit. I mean, when I say there's a little herbal to it. I would say there's a little bit of a mint note. For me, um, it's not the first thing that I think of when I smell it. But if you're sensitive to it, you know, that that might be the case. And um, as much as I love this whiskey, I know it's a rye. I know that can that can kind of freak people out. So, uh, yeah, I would I would be nothing but honest with you about that. So Joe says, I want a bottle of the cherry cinnamon fireball barrel. <laughs> It is literally that. It is like if imagine imagine cherry cinnamon fireball in good whiskey form. That's what the 130 proof barrel is like. <laughs> it's funny. Uh Brandon, did you get that from Seal Box, the Nashville Barrel Company? I saw that they had one. I don't remember if it was 126 though. That's that's, you know. Jeb says, "How is the 130 proof with a little water?" We did water it down there. You know what? Let me do it with the cap. We watered it down there and it didn't do well, but we are also like pretty deep in the whiskey at that point. And, you know, when you do a barrel pick for me, when I'm in a different nosing environment than this room or, you know, just being indoors in like a house, not where you're surrounded by barrels and wood and stuff like that, I have a hard time smelling until my nose gets used to the environment. So the beginning of the of any barrel pick I go on, it takes me like 10 minutes to get used to the room with my nose, which is not great. <laughs> but by the time we got to this, though, um, I felt like I was on, but then we had also consumed quite a bit of whiskey. So we put water in it. I didn't feel like it did very well, but let's see. It lightens up with like uh, an Asian pear note and like um, uh, vanilla. It's good. 
Actually, that's really good. It's underwhelming on the nose, but the palate is very good with water. Well, uh-oh. Like Marshall said, buyer's remorse. All right, I think we did the right thing. <laughs> Paul Graham in for uh, 20. Thank you, Paul. I got you in, man, for four entries. Appreciate you. Uh, seal box pick was around 120, says Clay. So it was a local bourbon club pick, Brandon said. Wow, dude, that's awesome. Well, look, I had never tasted anything around that proof for an 11-year MGP rye. So you said 126. I mean, that's hot. So that 126, 130, no matter, like, that range seems to be... Uh, kind of uncharted territory at least for me um planet whiskey says i can take a little mint just don't like a mint bomb yeah those like a uh, kentucky owl rye those are mint bombs it's like eating toothpaste <laughs> um so let's keep going here through some of these venmo super chats um we got marty right yep so we're on to mr daniel brendley aka pink dan uh, i'm gonna taste one of his uh, samples blind at some point in this stream. And Dan, please remind me about that. If I, because last time on a Patreon live stream, I think I forgot, or maybe it was a live stream on the channel. I forgot to do a blind. I said I was going to do it. Justin Reynolds in for two, $10 super chat. Thank you, Justin. All right. So at any rate, this is my last sip of this pick before the rest of the sample goes out and I have to wait three weeks to uh, get my bottle. So cheers. I'm so happy we found that barrel. All right, so we're going to move on now. I think what we should do I was going to I was going to taste this, the Prideful Goat 8 year, but I don't think it's fair to taste that after uh drinking 11 year MGP. So I think I might have to put that off to a different day. Mike Conklin, sipping on Sealbox Tumbling Dice 8-year uh, MGP Rye Pick, 116. I have full faith your pick will kill. I'll say this, Mike. I did compare, I mean, I compared the pick, and that, that might have been on Patreon, to the Prideful Goat 8, and it blows it out of the water, which was reassuring, because Prideful Goat's good. All right. So Paul says, Cam, what's the backstory on how you went with uh, River Roots or got hooked up with them for your very first pick? Yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good question. Um, that malted rye, insane. So River Roots, the reason I got hooked up with them is because Toshi Toshi Bake sent me a sample of that very first um, seal box pick. It's not this one, but you know it looks similar. It was the Michael Simon pick that they put on seal box. And I had I had looked at that bottle, debated picking it up, didn't do it. He sent me that sample. I tasted it on a live stream, loved it, put it in my whiskey of the year running, decided not to continue on with it. And in, uh, instead, I made a separate video saying it was my favorite finished whiskey of the year. Uh, the River Roots guys saw it and they just reached out to me and they said, hey, could you send us that video or a clip or something we can post? It's like, yeah, sure. And I sent them the video and then I just kind of casually said, hey, you guys think about doing barrel picks? And they're like, yes, this is all we want to do is, you know, we want to do these these barrel picks. I know they have a few blended products, but by and large, they're focused on picks. And the conversation moved fast and we set a date. And truthfully, the channel wasn't really ready. I don't even, I mean, I don't know if we're ready right now. It, it did worry me, but with all the laser code hilarious stuff going on and the channel growth and the patreon growth at that time i just thought you know what let's strike while the iron's hot and let's go do the first barrel pick and uh, i've learned a lot along the way i had no plan uh, for a lot of things that happened and we're working through them and i think we're gonna be fine you know but understanding the relationship between producers and retailers and how all of that works that's something else i'm still trying to figure out on the back end just to make sure i i understand everything that's going on 
uh, and I can kind of predict outcomes. You know what I mean? Um, and then, of course, like we've been talking on Patreon about we have a second pick coming up with Middle West Spirits. I've got a few of their samples right here, uh, not for our pick. But I sat down with them yesterday uh, with Kyle from Middle West Spirits, and we're going to pick a 30-gallon, which their 30-gallon stuff is insane. But it's all pretty much gone at this point. But they still have some 30-gallon wheat whiskey at about six years old. So we're going to go in uh, in, a, in three weeks, and we're going to pick a 30-gallon wheat whiskey. Yield is going to be about 80 to 100 bottles or so. So very excited about that. So second barrel pick within the same month. First day of the month, and... Uh, Almost the last day of the month for these barrel picks. Matt Porter. Good to see you, man. I hope you're hope you're hanging in there. Uh with them with them upper chomps. You got them, you got them fresh upper chompers. Hope you're doing well, man. Thinking about you. Yeah. Everybody's everybody's uh everybody's thinking about you, rooting for you, and that's awesome. All right, final sip of that 130 proof, which is watered down now. And then also, I am uh, I need to email Dark Arts back. We're also looking at a Dark Arts pick and, of course, Junkies pick. So we might have four barrel picks coming up in the next couple months, which is more than I thought we would do. <laughs> but let's let's do it. Why not? Jason Zell, thank you. I got you in for a $50 Super Chat, man. That is incredibly generous. I appreciate it. Joel Parrish with a uh, $9.71 Super Chat. I think maybe, Joel, I think maybe you hit uh, business transaction or something. But I got you in for two, man. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Only a few more, guys. And then we'll keep going here. I got some PayPals as well. We'll get to those soon. Marshall in for four says cheers. Cheers to you, man. Uh, we're going to do Booker's. We're gonna do Booker's next, so let's get this let's get this flight ready. Wow, that new riff. Awesome, 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 awesome. <laughs> All right, so I want to make sure I got uh, Paul Graham Planet Whiskey. Should be Tim, and it should be one more up here, which uh, was uh, Paul P. All right, got you guys. All right, Booker's Flight. I've got to label these Bookers. Um, we got to do all the same color. <laughs> Wayne. Wayne. I read this. I read this in my head as glad to see you're still with us. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh my God, Matt! It's like it's like when you guys see those things on, um, like on Facebook or Instagram, and it's a it's an article from some BS like news like online source, and you think it's like that somebody has died, but it's just some stupid piece of news. That's the way I read that, Wayne. <laughs> Matt, glad to see you're still with us. Gosh. He better be. We got uh we got Matt Madness in uh, May or something this year. Devin says if you need someone for the Evernorth pick, you can count me in only two hours away. Yeah, Devin, I gotta figure out, you know, by the time we do that pick, I think the Patreon tiers will be expanded and we'll have to figure that out. Uh, but of course, anytime I go do picks, it's going to be a balance, right? Of people that I invite to the pick or people that come in based on a randomizer in the Patreon from certain tiers versus Sarah coming on the, you know, like it's going to be a, it's going to be a balancing act. Um, I'm not super excited about that because y you know, you always feel bad. You always want to be as generous as possible, but you gotta, um, you gotta make some decisions on that stuff, just like anything else. But yeah, I, uh, I'll keep that in mind, man, because I know you're close. 
And it's great to go up and hang with those guys. So thanks again, Joe Dickinson, for uh, these Booker samples for this. Okay. I think I, uh, I think I'm doing good here. Yep. Uh, Whiskey BS, uh, does River Roots wax dip all their bottles, even the first pick? Good chance to cut my uh, Yeah, they're going to they're gonna dip the pick, but they have pull tabs, so you're good. And the wax is easy to get off. It's, just, it's literally just one pull, and you're good. The only thing I've noticed with their bottles is both of the ones that I've opened, these are synthetic corks. The corks are spinning when I open them. Uh, and I need—I need, actually need to tell them about this. It doesn't prevent you from taking it out uh, after you after you get it out the first time. Just don't put it all the way back in because then it's just spinning and it's really hard to leverage it against the bottle to get it out. But both of mine have done this surprisingly. Like this one is a replaced cork on the seal box bottle. They don't break; they just spin. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but interesting that it's happened to two of my bottles. Blue run corks have that spin problem too, says Joe. Yeah, that must be just a, a facet of what's going on with those. But yeah, the wax kills me. If if it was not a pull tab wax, I would not wax it because I, I hate that. Um. Okay, so Walker Clark, thank you. I got you in for 10, man. He says, cheers. Excited to hopefully get to experience the pick. I'm going to try to get it in as many people's hands as I can. So I got Marshall. We've got uh, William Hines. My goodness. You guys are so incredibly generous. William Hines with a $100 super chat. I got you in for 20 and that is insane, William. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. William Molnar. Another William. William Molnar dropping a $50 super chat. Thank you, dude. In for 10, says, uh, going to have to catch a replay tomorrow, but popped on just in time to hear, I still wear the boot in public. Of course, everyone is sympathetic to school kids with boots, casts, or crutches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Scott, thanks, thanks, Will. I'm just playing the victim card over here. Scott, in for 10, I got you, man. $50 super chat. I appreciate you. Mike Conklin, in for 20. Four entries, got you. Mike says, I got to compare to that Rye 3. And finally, Guy in for a $100 Super Chat. You guys are incredible. Thank you. Guy says, excited about the pick. Got you in for 20 entries, Guy. All right. So I'll get to the PayPal's in a second, but I want to taste some damn whiskey. I can't taste whiskey because you guys are too freaking nice. Ron, I got you. Thank you, man. In for four. Cheers to you. So, bookers are poured. Let's get them out of the way. And let's mix these bad boys up. Unfortunately, I can't tell you which one is which as we go through this flight because we're doing it this way with this mix, this mix them up thing. Um, but we'll find out at the end together. And I think this will be kind of, you know, useful information. I'll try to, uh, as we go through this flight, you know, I'll try to bookmark this, I guess, at the end. Uh, once, once this live stream is over. And try to, you know, if people want to watch this after the fact, they can maybe skip right to this part for, for this. All right. So I think that's pretty mixed up there. Okay. So let's start with glass one now on the nose. And uh, by the way... I taste it at River Roots because they have so many different things. They've got, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the distilleries. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that. But something similar to Booker's, let's just say that, at a higher age. Um, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that. I mean, we, we didn't sign NDAs, so we're good. You guys know how that goes. Some of you might know that, remember that. But we tasted some stuff that was similar to this, let's say, and it was so, so good, in my opinion. I really liked it. 
and nuttiness for me is is very hit or miss. They had some great stuff. Um, so, anyways, and the thing about doing picks with it with an NDP like those guys is, if you do another river, like if we did another pick with them in three months, it it's not weird that we're doing another pick with the same place because we could just pick barrels that they've got from a different producer. So, so it's like doing a pick from a different distillery, even though the bottle says the same thing on it. Um, so I, I really, I think it's great. I think it's really great. Dan says, damn, this malted six-year new riff is delicious. It's very good. Uh, Ron says, I have a lacrosse-themed blind coming your way this weekend. What? <laughs> Watch out for the long stick midi. Oh, geez. I was, Ron, I was a face-off midi, so... That's funny. Yeah, I st Ron, I still have two pours from you, mystery wise. I'm gonna. I haven't filmed any of that mystery stuff yet, but that's coming. I promise. Uh, Clay, well, it's basically what I'm drinking right now. Oh, Toshi, amazing! Able to catch the stream on an airplane. Wow, Toshi, that's crazy, man. Where are you going? Where, where over? Uh, what are you on? What are you thirty thousand feet above right now? All right, I'm going to do a quick nose down the line because glass one smells great. It doesn't smell that nutty. Oh, these are pretty different, though. I wonder if there's a color difference. I've always... Yeah. Looks like they're all pretty much the same. Okay. Oh, there is some, some significant difference, actually, between these. The first three... So glass one. Right away. Okay. I do a, just a quick, a quick nosing evaluation, let's say, of these four. Glass three on the nose is super sweet. There's something about glass three that I really like. So I got to keep that in mind as we go through this. Glass two is uh, peanut oil, very bitter peanut. Elijah Craig A124, like that bitterness. So I think one and four on the nose are pretty middle of the road. Three is exceptional for this lot of, of four. And two is not very good. So with that in mind, now let's, let's go into the palates of each of these and uh, kind of just work our way down the line. Toshi, right over Vegas on the way back from Austin for a quick work trip. Basic, <laughs> drinking basic Buffalo Trace, but it ain't bad. <laughs> nice, man. Class one. Classic bookers. This is just cinnamon bark, cinnamon stick, and peanuts. It's, um, you know, it's brittle, but it's not bitter. And I like that. If I'm going to drink one of these, one of these bookers, I'm okay. Like when, when I grab a bottle of bookers to pour out, I know, I know generally what I'm getting. I know I have to expect the peanut notes, the, the, the youth, the intensity, the cinnamon, <clears throat> but what I don't want is bitterness and glass one doesn't have that, which I like. So this is just like an entirely appropriate bookers with a little Hershey syrup. Yeah, but it, at the price point at 90 to a hundred, uh, yeah, 90 to a hundred, I think is where it is now. I would not be buying glass one like that. That's a tough sell for me. All right, glass two. Yeah, this is bitter. This is bitter, grassy, ethanol. This is not good. <sighs> Gasoline note. It's a bitch on the palate, too. Wow, that is proofy. Ugh, that's the... Maybe the one and only taste of that one I'm doing. That's that's not great. 
<clears throat> All right. <sighs> Jeb really selling me on Booker's tonight. <laughs> Glass three. Glass three smells great. There's like, this is chocolate, man. Glass three is very good. This this is one of those bookers that moves beyond the standard notes and gets to something richer and deeper. It smells older to me. Yeah, this is good. Palette's a little more standard. It's big and it develops well, and there's no bitterness. Just really intense young oak, but it's not bitter. Glass two is is just bitter. Huh. Glass three was deceptive. I thought the palette would be a little more sweet and relaxed than that. But. <clears throat> <laughs> Toshi, what's up, man? Uh, you Venmoing me from the freaking airplane? <laughs> Thanks, dude. All right, Toshi, I got you in for 10. He says, always good content, maybe even more enjoyable on a flight. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's really nothing else to do for you up there. <laughs> That's funny. All right, on to glass four. All right, I think glass four on the nose is somewhere between glass three, which was very sweet and chocolatey and darker for a Booker's, somewhere between that and glass one, which is standard. So four is the in between uh, those two. Oh, it drinks great. It's relaxed and like kind of off profile um ooh strawberry uh strawberry jam notes and uh like burnt wheat like toasted wheat bread that's what i want to say ooh ooh that might be the winner i didn't see that coming 3 was deceptive nose great palate it's good Hmm. All right, so the winner of this flight is going to be between glasses three and four, I believe. Dan Hooper uh, recently received... Re <laughs> try saying... Try a couple of R words in a row after like five sips of bookers not easy dan hooper <laughs> says i recently received one as a gift can't wait to see where it ranks dan um do you know which one it was got you in for two man thank you clay i love it sounds like they should have called glass to the ex-girlfriend batch <laughs> bitter Oh, man, I'm trying to refrain from saying things. Not enough whiskey. Not enough whiskey. Uh, Mike says, I was buying every batch for a while after Bardstown Batch hooked me. It was a great batch, man. I still have mine. But the inconsistency is tough to stick with for the price. It's tough to buy them blind. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, glass four is, is very good, but it's between three and four. Like, I know my order between one and two. Two is last. That's horrible. Glass two is horrible. All 
All right, I'm gonna taste three again. Now that my palate is really dialed into these bookers, they're not hitting me as hard. And I can get into the flavors more. All right, one more. Glass four, the development is delayed. It sits relaxed and sweet for like five seconds and then it takes off. Glass three takes off immediately. So, which is better? For me personally, I like glass four. People that want intensity in their drinking experience are gonna like glass three. Um, but I, I have my order, so here we go. In last place is glass two. And I don't know any of these batches, so I can't even speculate on what it is. Uh, last place is 03. Mighty Fine Batch is in last place. I think this is uh, easily bad. <laughs> this is easily, like, there was no debating on the nose and on the palate right away. It is just a bitter mess of a whiskey. Ooh. The, I think the only way that I'm not saying anyone in the chat is wrong, but the only way I can put myself in someone's shoes and say that they would like Mighty Fine Batch is if you're just going for intensity and you're not worried about bitterness or balance or any of those things. Man, I mean, that's bad. All right, so let's go to glass one now, which is in third place. This is very classic. Very classic, glass one. Mm -hmm. This is number two. This is the Apprentice Batch. So Apprentice Batch is in second place, which leaves Charlie's and Storyteller for number one and two. And that's what people in the chat were saying, that Charlie's and Storyteller were the ones that were good. And this, you know, it's holding true right now. All right. Mighty fine. Uh, Brandon said, I heard uh, Mighty Fine was best of the year. Oh, for me, I i mean, I, I, you saw on the first nosing and tasting, like I quickly, quickly denounced <laughs> this batch, but that's just me. That's one palette, you know? Um. All right. I, I've got to say glass four is winning for me. Let me confirm. It's a taste of three. And here's a taste of four. Yeah, four. Any day of the week, four. All right, glass three is 01, which is Charlie's. So Storyteller Batch is the winner. It's relaxed. It is so relaxed and so good. And, oh, that's funny. Everything is seven years, one month, but Storyteller is seven years, two months. And I said it tasted the oldest. <laughs> that's 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 pure dumb luck, but 127.8, what are the others? Wow, and it's the highest proof, and it drinks the lowest. I mean, that, to me, is a testament to it being a good whiskey and defying the Booker's profile in favor of something that is a little bit uh, more balanced and sophisticated, maybe is the word. Wow, Storyteller is, I mean, this is, let me grab my Bardstown batch. All right, let's 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 put it next to Bardstown because Let's see. I have, uh, I got some more glasses. Yeah. 
the Bardstown batch for me kind of slightly defied the the Booker's profile and had some extra notes that put it, you know, put it over the top, I guess, is 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 the way to say it. And I feel like the storyteller batch is doing the same thing, just in a different way, where it's really defying that Booker's expectation. Uh, what's going on here? Who is sending me a message? Um, oh, I think it's someone on secondary. Oh, geez. What is that? Old Forrester. Oh, I thought it was an old president's choice. Toshi, I, I got excited. I still have some of that 1969 president's choice you sent me, which is, uh, that's one of Sarah's favorite whiskeys. So the rest of that sample is, I mean, I've just been saving it for her. Maybe when we open the uh, 2008 George T. Stag, she can just drink the Old Forester. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Storyteller. I can't believe how clear that, that victory was. Dan H., in for two. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. I got you in. Um, Dan, are you the same Dan as Dan Hooper or no? Because Dan Hooper was the last one to super chat. So I want to make sure that those are different people. Uh, Jay says, I have story time and mighty fine. I haven't cracked him yet. If I were you, Jay, this is just me. I would trade that mighty fine. Storyteller is phenomenal. Toshi, I love that old president's choice. I'm looking for another bottle on auction to grab at some point. <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for you as well. Toshi, how much, if you don't mind sharing, you can just DM it to me if you want. But I am curious how much the first one ran you because I would pay uh, a pretty penny for that. Um. Where is it at? I have so much whiskey on the floor in this room. Um, let's put on the, let's put a different mix of music on. So this is that President's Choice 1969. Or is it 89? No, 69. Man. That's a great one. Surprisingly affordable for what it was, says Toshi. Oh, 700. Yeah, honestly, in today's world of stuff like that, that is not bad. But yeah, 1969 version of President's Choice for 700 bucks. Yeah, I mean... All things considered, that is, it's not bad. Okay. So this is Bardstown Batch. And the reason I like this is because Bardstown Batch had extra cinnamon notes, if that's possible on Booker's, and not a lot of peanut. It had extra cinnamon and like this fruit note to it. Yeah. Oh, apparently someone tagged me in a group that I'm not in. Oh my God, that's a freaking old Forester staff bottle. Oh God. I got to respond to this guys. Oh my God. If that's in a decent price range, I'm about to spend a lot of money. <laughs> I actually prefer Storyteller a lot. I prefer Storyteller significantly over the Bardstown Batch. Storyteller is perhaps, 
my favorite batch of Booker's. And I think it's because it kind of drinks like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof in a way where it has more of a rounded out, oaky, leathery, like Kentucky profile to it and not just in your face peanut and cinnamon. I think Storyteller is incredible whiskey. Man. Yeah, that, that would be my recommendation. And the good thing is that was the last batch of 2023, so it's probably still sitting on shelves. Uh, I would pay 90 bucks for this. T totally. If you put it next to other batches, and if you are a proof hound, you might find that it drinks too relaxed. That's not a problem for me because I like the balance in it, but just understand what you're getting into if you do pick it up. Uh, let's see, trying to think of the last time I bought Booker's. I don't think I've bought any since they increased the price from 75 to 100. Don't want to take the chance. Yeah, agreed. I mean, Booker's should be a $60 product. It really, and that's what it was, what, eight years ago? Like, when was, when's the last time Booker's was 60 bucks? Come on. Uh, let's see, Tiller's Bourbon Challenge with a $5 super chat. Thank you. The Guys, there's an employee bottle of Old Forester on secondary. Okay, hang on. What do we got here? How much is it? <sighs> uh, I've gotta, I gotta buy this bottle right now for a lot of money. Oh, God. Sorry. What's playing out in my brain is silent, <laughs> but in my head, it's very loud. Uh, story of my life. Thank you, Tiller's Bourbon Challenge. All right. Michael, <laughs> got you in for one. Let me get you, man. Thank you for the super chat. Just popped my storyteller out of the bunker. Oh, man. It is so good. It is so good. That's what I want bookers to taste like. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm going to do this. Don't buy whiskey on secondary and do a live stream at the same time. It's not good. <laughs> Joe, I'm glad you liked one of them. <laughs> yeah, Joe, thank you and sorry. I'm not trying to uh, poop all over your whiskey. Although that's probably a specific type of video that exists on the Internet. Uh, Mike B, in for one, does, uh, says, cheers, Cam. Great content as always. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Yeah, Clay was saying 2012 maybe for a Booker's at 60. Uh, Toshi, was that employee the old, uh, old Forester anniversary bottle? 125th, uh, is it 120? No, 125 proof. I had a chance to try this bottle at um, Pours in the Park two years ago, and Sarah loves it. And so if she sees that I, find, that I had one of these, before she asks the price point, she 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 would rather drink the bottle and probably not know the price point on this. Like that's how much she likes this bottle. Uh, uh, have I had Pinky's batch? Says Ron. No, I haven't actually. It's only money. Well, Travis, it's the staff bottle, dude. Forget floor whiskey. <laughs> Oh, you guys are killing me. Don't do this to me, guy. Come on. <laughs> Let's help you decide. Oh, I hate my life. I hate my life. Okay. Let's move. Let's move right along. Thank you, Joe, for uh, for this.
uh, Jesse in for, um, well, it's for the wife. You got to buy it, says Toshi. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> she also might kill me if I buy it. It's a it's a toss up, dude. It's, you know, it could go either way on this one. <clears throat> okay, I bought it. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> this is great. This is a great, this is a great thing that just happened. This is a great thing. We did it. We did it together, Travis. We did it. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sweating. I think I'm sweating. Um, all right, what? I guess we're doing a whiskey live stream, so what do we got to taste? <laughs> Here, I'm kidding, by the way. I am, I do have to say, final wrap up on this Booker's thing. I'm so shocked at how good the Storyteller batch is compared to these others, but also compared to Bardstown, which is my favorite of the last few years. And I know I haven't had pinkies. I know people are talking about that, but. It's really, really good, and it smells 10 years old. It doesn't smell seven years, two months. That's why I think I'm in love with it. It has the Booker's, like, intensity in a more reserved way, so it comes off just sweeter and more round. Paul P., for some reason, I enjoy watching someone else spend their money on whiskey. Maybe this is how I fight FOMO. <laughs> Toshi, I I am gonna I am like gonna cry because I'm laughing. So, oh my god, Toshi, Toshi just sent a hundred dollars super chat. <laughs> he said, "Glad you bought that bottle. Sarah will love it. No regrets. Not even one letter." Thank you, Toshi. Oh god, that's funny. Toshi, you are the goat, man. Uh, no, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do a mystery sample. I promise you're like, wow, he's I promise like I am not uh, with with everything that just happened, the drama of purchasing this bottle and um, <laughs> and Toshi's insanity. I'm actually in pretty decent shape tonight. I do promise you that. Bobby Holton. Bobby Holton sending a $5 super chat in for one. Thank you, Bobby. And he says, old Forrester staff bottle fund. <laughs> Thank you, man. You guys are hilarious. Oh, my goodness. That is so funny. Sean Holtgrave says, pour a scotch. You know what? That's actually a good idea because if there's any time to do a scotch, it is just before we get into 138 proof uh, River Roots, which is the giveaway for tonight. <sighs> All right, Javier. I don't know if Javier is still here. I would imagine after the shenanigans, Javier said, I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here. But Javier, if you are still here, tell me which sample you sent me that you would like me to taste. I pulled the Craig Ellicky Armagnac finish because I thought it would be you know, something that others in the chat could relate to. But if there's anything else you want me to taste, you know, let me know if you are still here. Jeb, Cam has quite the post-coital glow. Look, dude, buying a bottle of whiskey on secondary at a cost that makes me shudder is kind of the same thing. You know, it gives you, it's that hate-love relationship. Travis, what happened with the MacBook? Um, somehow it's still running. Uh, progressively more keys are not working on the keyboard, so I have to use this. <laughs> so it's only a matter of time. I still have to text Guy and Philip, who have offered some, some computer advice, but I'm, I'm not going to wait till the computer dies, but I've just like... My time has been spent recently on 
a lot of channel stuff uh, outside of the computer, and I need to text them and kind of get their advice on what to buy used. Eventually, in the next year or two, I will upgrade to a, a really souped up Mac, but I want to make the right decision right now. Uh, anyways. Yeah, exactly. I swear to drunk, I'm not God. I've heard that the M1 Pro is actually the direction that I should go, but I, I, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Aiden says he just man just spent 18k on an old force. Yeah, it was definitely not that much. It was uh it was about 5% of that though. <laughs> Hate love relationship. So you love her and she hates you when she's <laughs> But will she see it? Uh Dan, thank you. Yes. I, I should do a blind before my palate gets blown out. Uh, I don't think Javier's here. So I'm going to forego the scotch. Sean, I'm sorry. We're going to do a blind. And it's it's from Pink Dan in the, in the chat. I'm just knocking floor whiskey over at this point. All right, we have a winner. So I have this stack of note cards. All right, so dead card on this side. Uh, this size, this side says, um, here, let me get these rubber bands off here. Or one rubber band, one large rubber band. All right. So it says, if you do them in a flight, do them in this particular order. But if you do them randomly, do them in this order. So, Dan, I'm going to do uh, number four first, which you've put on top. Now, Dan, let me ask you this. I see tape on this. On This says, this is a dead card on this side. So it says number four. I see tape on it. Is there, Are there two cards? There are two cards here. So how does this lay out? If I'm going to show the chat something, what am I showing them? If I lift this up, is this the answer or is that a dead card? Should I undo the tape and lift up what is on the top here? Uh, Michael, do I have any Kentucky Al? I don't have an open one. I have one batch three rye in my basement sealed. I was kind of saving that one. You have to cut them open. Okay, let me, I got to grab my knife then. Okay. So I have to cut it open. So this is going to fold out that. Okay. So um, Dan and everybody in the chat will have to tell me, like, number one, can you read this um, at this distance? And is this the proper orientation for this card? Okay. So I'm going to turn my head and I'll show you this. Please no spoilers in the chat. And tell me if this is the proper orientation for the card or if I need to flip it upside down. And if you can read it, by the way. So I'll leave this up for like, I don't know, three, two, one. So tell me if you could see that and if that was the, the, the correct orientation of the card. Can't read it. Move it closer. Oh, this is gonna be tough if it's gonna focus, okay. But if that was the proper orientation, let's see if it will actually focus. I'll try to put a hand behind it. Hmm. 
Tell me if you tell me if this focuses. If it doesn't, then we'll just go and we'll just have to deal with it. I don't have my secondary camera turned off on this one. All right. Okay. You got it. Okay. Great. Sometimes I have Sarah re like check these first, and then if they need to be rewritten, I'll have her just do that, and then I'll seal it up or whatever. So you guys got it. So this is uh, sample four uh, that Dan sent. Let's do this blind uh, sample real quick before we go into the river roots, which I know we're giving that away and we're not tasting it till the end. I feel bad about that, but at 138 proof, yeah, you know, you get it. I got to get a fresh glass. Jeb, I don't want to imagine that. <laughs> Look, when she finds out that I got that bottle, she's going to, in the most polite, uh, feminine way possible, shit her pants. All right, here we go. Pink Dan, sample number four. Oh, right away, tart green apple. Smells good, though. Smells sweet. Like sweet powdered sugar green apple. Oh, what is this? Copper Wolf. Ooh, uh, golden raisin on that last uh, nose. Copper Wolf in for uh, four super chats. Thank you. Says, cheers, everyone. Cheers to you, dude. In for four. Sean says, just spend that same amount on her. Well, Sean, then I might be broke. Um, Jesse, uh, just pour some of the... So, guys, Jesse was on the pick this past weekend and has one of these bottles. And so we'll be able to taste it together. But, yeah, it is a an intense whiskey. What is this? Damp? Okay. Like damp, musty basement. That kind of bright green apple note, but funky, but like, uh, like you left it out in the sun. Sometimes I say that about fruit notes. A lot of that note. And then like, yeah, powdered sugar. This is interesting. It smells intense, but it's not coming off with too much heat. Huh. This tastes so familiar. I'm going to be pissed when I find out what it was. I'm going to take a, I'll just type it in my phone, a couple of notes. Um, the proof on this. This is around 118 to 121. I'm going to go 119.5 proof. Um, <clears throat> maybe it's an old Forrester staff bottle. Oh, God. Uh, well, then my memory is failing me. This is very good. You know what it reminds me of is Heaven Hill 20 Year Corn Whiskey. It has a little bit of that profile to it. The, um, the Heritage Collection. It has some of that. <clears throat> but what else does it remind me of? 
Yeah, I, I, I'm going to stand by like 119.5. I said on proof. The age is really tough on this one. And part of me thinks it's that corn whiskey. I'm going to say it's 12 years old, but I'm not confident in that. I, I think it's from Kentucky. Do I think it's a, what kind of whiskey do I think it is? It has a little light whiskey vibe to it, but it's not light whiskey. It kind of smells like an Arnold Palmer. Like sweet tea and lemon, you know? I'm going to dial back the age. I'm going to go... I'm going to dial back the age. Nine years. Kentucky, 119.5. I'm going to call it a bourbon. No finish. Bottle. Is this just a knob? This could be a knob creek. Eh, it's not. But it has it's nutty. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to go Knob Creek 120 proof. Nine year. What is this? Wow. It's really good. Holiday soft red wheat. I, I would never get that. I've never had this stuff. I mean. You guys just saw me in the beginning thinking this could be Heaven Hill 20 year corn whiskey I'm not saying my memory is good like totally faulty the level of oak on this whiskey at 6 years old is crazy and I completely understand the hype around this stuff now so that is that is pretty remarkable um, and I could have never got the state, uh, Missouri, like never in a million years. I said 119.5. What is the proof on this? <clears throat> um, Rick House proof, uh, holiday. Uh, wheat. bottle from the exact proof okay but what like what are we talking oh each month is different uh dan sent you the pics on messenger okay let's see damn 120 120.1 proof i said 119.5 i'll take the proof guess i cannot believe that's six years old I can't believe, I cannot believe that's six years old. <laughs> oh, geez, that is crazy. Um, and it gives you the percentage breakdown of floors. And a lot of it's coming from the fourth floor out of seven. Okay, that's, that's middle of the road, though. Man, that's good whiskey. You could mistake this. So here's the deal. Um... When I tasted the Heaven Hill 20 in the Matt Madness Champions match, I called it Henry McKenna 10 because when you're when you're dealing with a corn whiskey, you're putting it in used cooperage, which is going to have less of an oak impact. So over 20 years, that might feel more like a 10 year. I called it McKenna 10, and the proof felt low because it was again, it was it was a relaxed whiskey. Um this reminds me of that because you get this nuttiness 
but you get this like there is a little bubble gum cotton candy thing now that I smell it. But the fact that I would mistake this for that Heaven Hill 20 in some ways. I think this is really good whiskey. Heaven Hill 20 corn whiskey. What was the proof on that, by the way? 115 proof. Yeah. It, it's kind of doing the same thing for me. But there's an oak and age note on this that when you have it blind and you have no idea what you're dealing with, and you would never guess it's a Missouri weeded bourbon at cask strength, <laughs> that's that's significant. Um, that gets me excited about whiskey. And nowadays with all these shitty four-year bourbons and things being sourced and put in finishing barrels and just terrible quality, to have something that like, it's... I don't find myself getting giddy about whiskey very often. Recently, I feel like I have. I've tasted a lot of things recently that have blown me away and given me a lot of hope for the industry as a whole. And it's going to happen that a lot of these NDPs, these really small operations producing terrible whiskey, go out of business. And the market dictates that they should go out of business because the products aren't good because the people behind them are trying to make a quick buck and they don't know what they're doing. Um, this is what gives me hope. They distill this stuff, I believe, right? They distill and age their own stuff. It's great. It's great whiskey at six years old in a state that is not known for whiskey making. Um, yeah. Toshi, I know the Heaven Hill 18. I just spent I just spent the money I was going to spend on the Heaven Hill 18 on that bottle. So, what are we going to do? <laughs> oh god. All right, we got to we got to taste this River Roots now before we do this giveaway. Dan, thank you. That is a tricky sample. I'm actually going to wrap these back up in that uh, rubber band here. Well, that's a little tight on the rubber band, but okay. All right. I still got some more of this to uh, taste at a later date. Okie dokie. I don't think I... Oh, no, I've missed uh, a couple PayPals here. So let me get these guys. Sorry about that. And again, we'll we'll check in before we do the final, you know, giveaway here. We will check in on everybody and make sure um, that it's all accounted for. So, oh, I don't think I've gotten any of these uh, PayPal's tonight. Actually, I apologize for that. I I had the best intentions. I meant to I meant to get to them earlier. So, Copper Wolf was was the last one, and this uh, chat stream. And Mike B, I got. And Michael. Yeah, we're good. We're good here. Let me get a couple of PayPals. And then we will get into this River Roots. Do the giveaway. And then we will wrap this stream up. So Kilco is in. For one. Thank you, Brian. All right, we've got Tim Swope. In for two, says, uh, for a chance of river. And JG, JG, you sent your super chat as a as a business transaction, dude. 485. I guess I'll count it. Uh, okay, he says whiskey cheers. Thanks, man. All right, William Sherrod, which is Tyler. Uh, with two, two entries, says Tyler in chat. Uh. Thank you for all the content. Thank you for uh, contributing and helping out, man. Uh, Jeffrey Smith. In for two. 
says, it's Jeff. Love, looking forward to the barrel pick. Love the content. Thanks, Jeff. And finally, Lance Ortiz. This is the last one in PayPal. In for two. $10 super chat. Appreciate it, Lance. All right, guys. There we go. Let's taste this River Roots now. I'm going to clear a glass for this. Actually, you know what? I've got one empty. Ooh, it's so dark. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to compare this to the seal box. So this glass looks... Yeah. We'll just get some water in it. JG, are you drunk? Who said that? Paul P. Yeah. <laughs> are you drunk, Jay? All right. I will never finish these glasses of whiskey. Uh, let me keep these close by. I have a third and final thing we might put into uh, into this uh, comparison. Okay. Travis says, is it darker than 13th Colony Double Oaked? It is close. But this one is... I mean... The, the provenance on this one's pretty solid. Okay. So just to recap on the the seal box stuff and, and, and the River Roots uh, port barrel stuff, the first one came out 275, I want to say, from seal box on uh, the Michael Simon pick. And they had four of these port barrels from what I understand. I believe that first one, and that, that's the sample that Toshi sent me, was about 146 proof, I want to say. Very, very good. The port somehow doesn't overwhelm the whiskey. I mean, it's there. Like, you know it's there. But it had this acetone note. That was the one thing that detracted from the profile for me. And then this second pick came out from Sealbox. And I got some texts about it from people saying, hey, this is the real deal. Uh, the the River Roots guys, Ryan was saying that this is, he, he liked this better than the Michael Simon pick. And this one's 148 proof, 148.6, dark as night again. And then the the third barrel is, is purchased already. It's going somewhere else. And this is the last one that they're releasing on Saturday at the distillery from 1 to 3 p.m. in Cleveland. This is lower proof, 138. So it's a 148 seal box, barrel two, which is the favorite, versus 138, uh, the distillery edition with the red wax. So that's what we're tasting. We're going to start with the distillery edition red wax. I mean, both of these... Well, no, the distillery is seven years initial, seven years in port. The seal box is seven years initial, six years in port. Look at the color on this. It's crazy. So here we go. Hmm. It's just fun whiskey. This, uh, it smells so much like chocolate cake and fudge sauce. Menthol, because, I mean, 138 proof. It's, you know, it's intense. Vanilla ice cream, which goes along with that menthol note. But the the way the port barrel is interacting uh, with, the, with the base whiskey on, on this one, it's adding, it's adding like tart or sour dark fruit notes. So imagine that you go to a restaurant and you're like looking at the dessert menu and you, and you, get some sort of like German chocolate cake with uh, some sort of like dark fruit reduction or sauce on the top. And that sauce is not just sickly sweet, but it also has like some tang to it, you know? That's what this tastes like, or, or, or smells like rather. There is a teeny bit of a funky brandy note to this, which is kind of, it, it's a cross between Tart, bitter, um, 
a little bit sour, uh, not sour, a little bit sulfured. But when I think of sulfur notes, and I think of particularly sherried scotches, I'm very sensitive to sulfur. I don't like them. And when you get something like an Akintoshan, uh three wood, I think that's what I have, that it's like undrinkably sulfured. This whiskey just has the teeniest bit of this bitter tart sulfur note as well, which happens on some of these. Well, normally for me, it's brandy barrels that give this note off. And I have a whiskey that we can uh, throw in this mix and talk about here in a second. This has a little bit of that note, but let's take, let's get it on the palate first. Wow. Oh God. Oh my God. So front of the pat, I mean, it's a little, it's a little drying on the finish because it's 138 proof, seven years port. Wow. The, the upfront hit is this like gripping fudge brownie fudge sauce thing with that kind of sulfury, uh, sometimes I call it skunky, skunky brandy, skunky Armagnac. This might be what is called a, a rancio or rancio, however you want to say it, note in an Armagnac. That's what hits you up front. Wow. And then there's this weird blending transition period where you go from kind of tart fruit to complete fudge sauce. And then they start working together as it starts rolling back. So the front of the palate is kind of abrasive. And that's what you would expect from something like this. Got a, it's got a little, you know, 15% too much punch on the front end. But as it develops, it gets so sweet and so fudge brownie and, and, and tart, dark fruit reduction sauce, you know, berry compote, something like that. And the finish is all leather. It is a wild whiskey. And what what those guys, uh, uh, Tom and Ryan at, at River Roots, were telling me is that this drinks more like sometimes like an Armagnac. And, and I agree with that. This has more of these brandy qualities to it than actually it does port qualities. Whereas on the seal box, which is 10 proof points higher, smells like a hazmat, which it is. George T. Stagger, like light whiskey. It has that intensity of alcohol. This one is much more port. Like I can taste that this is a port finished product. Great. It, it's way more dark fruit focused. There is some chocolate to it as well. And I've talked about fudge on this. But the the distillery exclusive is so much fudge, but it has that kind of a little tart skunkiness to it. This one is much more dark fruit. You can taste port finishing on it. They're both so good in their own way, um, but they're they're different. They are certainly different. So you know. 250 bucks at the distillery for this. This was, I think, 285 on Sealbox. They're, they're, neither of them are cheap. They're both great whiskey. They're both totally different. Um, so whoever wins the giveaway, again, you're going to get a bottle of this. You're going to get a sample of that, um, the rye that we picked from, from uh, River Roots 11 year MGP and you're also going to get a sample of that barrel that we did not pick at 130 proof 11 year MGP rye so yeah crazy stuff crazy crazy stuff I think Jesse said it here in the chat I think if you like Armagnac Brandy this has a little funkiness to it you know a little bit uh, there's a little savory thing to it, very almond forward too. There's a lot of almond notes, almost like an Oloroso sherry cask.
Mm. But I'll tell you this. Sarah wanted to try these last night. She's been sick for like two weeks. And finally, her taste is back. She felt good. She's like, I want to try that River Roots pick. And she tasted both of these. She loves them both, but she tasted this one first. She was like, yeah, I kind of get that funkiness. But what she raved about was how much of the, like that fudge brownie note was in this one, which is crazy because I thought the seal box pick just tasted like a fudge brownie. And then you taste this and it's on a different level. Um, but again, if you, if you're not a finished whiskey fan, this is not for you. You know, I, I would not suggest picking up this one in particular, if you're not a finished whiskey fan, because you, you've got to like that influence to the whiskey. Um, I also think if you like sherried scotch, you're probably going to like this. So with that said, uh, let's wrap the giveaway now. It is 10.32 p.m. Let's wrap it at 10.35. I don't expect that we're going to get any more entries, but just in case, 10.35 p.m. We're going to wrap this up on the giveaway. We'll, we'll do the... Uh, yeah, Black Forest Cake. There you go. Jesse. I said something about... What did I say earlier? Some sort of... Ger oh, German chocolate cake. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Ashton. Little uh, Carpano Antica Vermouth note. I would... Yes. By the way, guys. Ashton was on the pick with us. There's, a, there's definitely a tobacco note to it as well. For me, with this with this whiskey, the best thing to do is to take the first sip and get my palate in the realm of dealing with how intense and tart and and just funky this this whiskey is. You got to take that first sip, and after that, you can dive in a little bit more. But that first sip is important. All right. So I'm good on PayPal. Let me check Venmo real quick. Uh, Mitch, throwing in a super chat here for five. Thank you, Mitch. Got you in for one. And he says uh, three seven, March 7th. Okay, so... If there's anybody left that wants to get in, you know, please do. But otherwise, we're going to uh, we're going to draw for this here in just a second. And I do not say that to pressure you. I'm just letting you know because you guys have been uh, maybe the the most generous ever tonight, perhaps. So. Thank you. Uh, Devin, just poured myself half of my sample of Sealbox River Roots. Nose is surprisingly not hot at all for its proof. Yeah, no, it at 148, it's, it's intense, but I don't find it off-putting. Mike, uh, is a two ounce staff pick included in the win? I don't know about, because I don't know when I'm going to open that bottle. That's the thing. I would, I will put that in a giveaway at some point once it's open, but I think Sarah and I, <laughs> when she, when she realizes I have that bottle, it's going to get opened immediately, but I have to make her not realize it. And then we have to set up a special occasion for me to open that bottle. So I can't guarantee it on this stream, unfortunately. It will pop up at some point, though. <laughs> Off pudding, says Michael. Nice. Okay, we're at 1035. Super chats are done. Uh, let me just confirm that I haven't missed anything here. All right. Got that. And let me go to PayPal. Um, okay. A 
looks like we are good. Yep, Lance Ortiz. Last one. Okay, and top, oh, top dog in with a 11th hour super chat here. I got you in for two, man. And he says, I'm in. Okay. Let me uh, share my screen with you here in just a second. We're going to have to do two rounds of, of looking at this because the list of names is uh, pretty long. So, there we go. Please check. Here's the deal. On the left, many many of you have heard this before. On the left is your name. On the right, number of entries, which is your dollar amount divided by five. Because every five dollars is on Super Chat uh, entry. Every five dollar Super Chat is one entry into the giveaway, right? So, uh, Paul P. here gave one entry, which is a $5 super chat. Uh, Travis, birthday boy, two entries, which is a $10 super chat, et cetera, et cetera. Jeb with a $50 super chat, which is 10 times five. So check your name on the left. This is per entry. So if you entered twice, your name will appear twice. And it populates over here on the right side. So from Paul down to Ron, check and then after that we will go from toshi to the bottom of the list so take about one minute and check to make sure i did not mess anything up please and then we'll move on and, and again two winners tonight seven spins on the randomizer the first winner is getting the the, the bottle of the river roots as well as uh, one ounce of my pick and one ounce of the uh, crazy 130 proof rye barrel. I also don't like that I said my pick. It was not my pick. It was our pick as a group. I don't know why I said that. Okay, so by the way, Patreon members who are uh, in here this evening, I have one more bottle of the of this pick that we're giving away tonight from uh, River Roots that we, you know, we, we were signing people up in the Patreon today for a cost plus shipping uh, ra randomizer. My buddy Robert that came with us, he bought a bottle, <laughs> and I knew. I knew he didn't want to spend 250 on a bottle and then he drank too much at the distillery and spent it. And then he's like, oh man, why did I buy that bottle? I said, dude, someone will take that off your hands at cost if you want. And he said, yes, please. <laughs> so we have one more of those to go for tomorrow's uh, randomizer in the Patreon for that bottle. So we're going to actually give two of those to Patreon members, which is cool. All right, and let's scroll down. It looks like no one's got an issue, so Paul to Toshi. Now we're going to go Toshi down to Top Dog. So check your name on the left with the number of entries that you have, which is your dollar amount divided by five. And again, thank you all so much for your super chats this evening. And just to recap tonight's stream, I mean... The eight-year malted rye from the High Note collection from New Riff. I cannot recommend that enough. I think that's an incredible bottle. The Weeded was fine. Good whiskey. But the, the malted rye eight-year, next level stuff. Cannot wait to try the eight-year bourbon from New Riff. Uh, the Booker's Flight Storyteller Batch. Such an easy winner. Yeah. 
Um, the Rickhouse Proof from Holiday. The Soft Red Winter Wheat Rickhouse Proof. Crazy for the age, for the price, everything. So... All right, we're going to wrap this up now. So I'm going to copy all of these names, which is insane. We're going to go to list randomizer, and we're going to spin this seven times. So this is the list. Here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, last one, seven. Boom. So Scott winning the bottle. The bottle, the sample of the pick, and the sample of the Crazy Rye 130 proof barrel. And Toshi coming in with a sample of this River Roots uh, distillery exclusive and dealer's choice samples, which I'm going to have to make very special because Toshi is too damn generous. So thank you guys. Congrats. Paul, Ron, very close. William Hines, very close. But Scott and Toshi coming away with it. I got to write this down on my phone so I don't forget. I have both of your info as long as no, you know, addresses have changed. And there we go. Congrats, guys. Michael says rigged. I hope I hope you don't actually mean that because at one point I had somebody legitimately question me, my integrity, the cha you know, and it and it did bother me a lot. Uh you guys saw me pull that web page up, spin it seven. I mean, you saw every aspect of what just happened so anyways okay you're kidding good because i that happened like a month or two ago and it freaked me out because i'm like i try to do everything so transparently anyways congrats guys scott and toshi that's a big win scott man so hope you guys enjoy that uh i think that's gonna do it tonight i gotta say thank you one more time to joe dickinson for the Booker samples, for the New Riff sample. I've got to say thank you to Leo for the both the New Riff samples, the Weeded and the 8-Year Malted Rye. This has been awesome. So thanks to River Roots as well for the barrel pick. It's so hard to say for me. It's like saying rural. River Roots. River Roots. Try to say that three times fast. It's hard. Um, and that's going to do it. So I'm going to have a video out either tomorrow or Saturday. And then we'll have a Scotch Sunday this week. A little lighter week. But that was kind of the plan because there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And I'm out of here. So cheers, guys. I'm going to wrap up uh, with a pour of this River Roots Distillery exclusive. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. Cheers, guys. All right. Here we go. Here we go. No. More like good night. All right. See you guys soon. <laughs>